Hello everyone, it's Lennon. <clears throat> Today I want to dress. I want to dress. No, I don't want to dress anything up. <laughs> I want. Today I want to address a topic that I'm pretty pa that I'm actually passionate about, and I haven't really known how <laughs> to do that. Because it just seems, it seems, I guess to me, as this personal thing. And so it's kind of hard to map out personal things that might not resonate with anyone else. But then I, then I kind of wrote some notes, I kind of journaled about it for a little while, you know, for the last couple of days since I've, I've had a, the last couple of days where uh, I've been realizing I've been visiting my mind palace. A little bit more lately so of course it's been on my mind right like in, in a conscious way it's been more prominent and so as it's closer to you know the the, the, <clears throat> the foreground so to speak I want to address it on the channel I do want like this video diary thing to happen so I'm hoping that I can do that today now I the topic is alters but it's my uh, mind palace, my mind temple, my mind, my astral altar. Um, I, I guess there are several names for this, but it's an altar that I believe resides in my mind's eye. I call it my mind's eye. Uh, the this this place that I visit that is very much imagination work. Okay, I believe the imagination to be a real thing. A, a real thing and I don't mean that to sound uh, I, I guess I don't mean that to sound extra woo-woo I guess I just mean that uh, from an early age I have had an active relationship with my imagination an active relationship with my mind my mind's eye and with uh, with being daydreaming just to put it out there I I'm very daydreaming I tend to want to think about things and I want to be able to <clears throat> visualize things. There's this really cool picture, and if I can find it, I will leave it here if I can credit it. If I can't credit it, then I probably won't put it on the screen. But it's this beautiful picture of a swan, and it says what our imagination looks like, and then the next, uh, like here's the real one, is like a swan, right? And then the picture beside it is what your imagination looks like, and it's very ethereal, abstract, Blo it's a they're blobs of color and I was like is that real <laughs> like when you're really trying to visualize a swan do, would it come out with the, as fine lines as we could see it you know see it on uh, in I guess in in reality right and that got me thinking of the mind being this this abstract place where we make our own, we make the rules. I think that that's what that picture was telling me in that moment is that we make the rules of our own mind palace. We make the rules of our own imagination. And the rule is there are no rules. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We map out our own rules <clears throat> coming from our own life experience and coming from what we've perceived. Because if I've never seen a swan in real life, how the hell would I really tangibly know what a swan looks like? I mean, I could go off pictures, but <clears throat> it's just one of those things that your brain uh, tries to map out for you uh, because seeing a picture of a swan isn't the same thing as really knowing what the feathers are doing at any given moment, really not, you know, really knowing how the head moves. Like, we don't, I wouldn't know any of that, right? So the brain can't really process that which it doesn't know, which I say a lot. Uh, so anyways, I'm rambling already. And here I want to point out that I've mentioned on the channel several times, especially in my witchcraft videos, that I don't have an altar. Now what I mean by that is that I don't... <laughs> and then one of my friends, um, uh, another fellow YouTuber that I'm friends with, he said, well, Lennon, I kind of feel like your whole house would be many altars everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, you are not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. Um, but it's not in the way that people, I guess people would uh, realize. 
and um, there's been several videos about altars, several uh, great videos about altars that talk about altars being anything, really anything that you could think of. There could be kitchen altars, there could be um, small altars, there could be simple altars, elaborate altars, blah, 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 blah. And they could be for, for many things. That altars, and I mean altars in tangible, because we're going to talk about the tangible for, for a minute. A minute, because I really want to dive into the, the mind altar aspect of this. But, my, like, when I think of the word altar and it being intangible reality, things on an altar I could touch and, and you know... Uh, play with and use in my magic in in, a, in specific ways. I don't necessarily have one. But then going back to what my friend said, I feel like you have many altars in your house. I got to thinking about that too. Um, and I want to refer you to here. I'm gonna do a cutaway here that shows what's on this table because I kind of feel like this end table right here because this is like my spot, like this is my seat. On the couch right this spot very much is an altar i believe that this is an altar it it ha houses things and sometimes it changes okay because i do believe that energy gets stagnant so you kind of have to change it around if i'm looking i've looked at that castle for a long time now but i do active actually i do active inner child workings with this with this little poly pocket castle here so if it were to just be something that's sitting here looking pretty and I'm not really doing any active workings with it, maybe I'd take it off and put something else there, right? For instance, this crystal ball, I'll, I'll, I'll do the cutaway in a second. This crystal ball was a gift from my husband and it is a, I mean, actually literally beautiful contraption here that just goes to show how much my husband knows me, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but it is a Halloween decoration. So technically I only try to pull it out um, or it, it, okay, it lives in my Halloween decoration box, right? So I typically only kind of like get it out and find it around Halloween Samhain. And it's kind of like a new gift every year because I get it out and I'm like, oh, yay. Uh, I get to look at it, you know, for, the, for a couple, a month or two, probably two months. And then I can put it back up and then the next, the following year, I can get it out. It's kind of like Christmas decorations, you know, there are just are some things that you want to have that magic about them. And this is one of those objects. But the fact that it's coming on here in a seasonal way makes this a very uh, interchangeable, an interchangeable magic, I'll say. So I feel like this end table is my, is a mini altar that lives in my house. Also my mantle. I cultivate my mantle to look a certain way and you know I, I feel so blessed that I even have a mantle because I very much grew up my entire life without having any kind of fireplace so um, and the hearth ever since uh, we, we moved out of my childhood home into a home that I lived for a few years until adulthood and they had my parents still are you know that they, they my mom still lives there and they have a huge fireplace. So for those last few years of living at home, I did have a fireplace and I realized that, that, that I loved, that I love having a fireplace and that it was one of those deal breaker things for me when it came time to buy my own house. <laughs> I don't get to use it as often as I like because I live in the South of the U S and it gets hot here and we barely have a winter. But anyway, I digress. The mantle, I very much change. I, I change it seasonally. Sometimes I, I change it. I change it more around Yule because that's my favorite um, holiday. But throughout the year, I'll get it'll get a stagnancy about it, and I'll get to change things around. Like right now, it very much looks like my. I guess what my inner world would look like: skulls and roses and amber glass, like amber diamond glass, and uh, just, I guess, elements that I feel are present in me, they, they go on the mantle. And um, some of those pieces are sacred. Some of them are hand-me-downs, some of them are inherited items, some of them are gifts. So it, it just feels very, it just feels like a personal thing, 
and I can I can touch those items I can move those items around and things like that so I feel like my mantle is an altar my nightstand which I'm not going to show you because it is a hot mess uh, I feel like that is my own personal like dream time altar I have my soul cards one and two on there which lives on my nightstand unless I'm, I'm pulling it out to do an active working but most often I use soul cards uh, in, in terms of dreams and journaling and stuff like that. So, uh, it seems to be where I get the most work out of them. Uh, certain handles, certain incense burners, and this a very, 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 very antique lamp that was handed down to me, uh, lives on my nightstand. So it's just like all these things that I cultivate together to form my nightstand and books books they, there's a book on there all the time um and if and if i how usually i have stacks of books but those are on the floor so i don't really count those this guy says like whatever i'm reading at the time so my nightstand is an altar i have a sh uh, a piece of furniture called a shift robe that is an antique that was handed down to my husband actually and we have turned the shift robe which is technically a wardrobe okay so it's a wardrobe <laughs> that we uh, inherited and it's very very old but i've turned it into our art cabinet so it houses all of our art equipment as i live in a very arts i'm an artsy person and you know we're an artsy family so art supplies go in there and stuff like that and it's a beautiful experience to you know it's a two drawer kind of a ship robe and you pull the drawers open and it's all the art supplies and they just call to you they speak to you and I just feel like that in and of itself isn't like my art altar. So uh, it's beautiful. I, I have shown you, shown you my witchy table, which is where I do my most tarot workings, incense workings. Um, I do some journaling over there, but it's quite a stand-up thing. Like there's a chair there because it happens to be a sewing machine, but I don't sit there. I house things there so it's more like a witchy catch-all for whatever I'm doing at a given moment right so anyway that friend was right I have many altars but my my favorite my favorite altar is my mind's eye altar now I don't necessarily know whether to say this is an astral because I do technically I travel there in a visualization meditation way so I, I kind of feel like they're different um, but I don't know I don't really know because I tend to visualize all the time my daydreamy self t tends to visualize all the time I can't really discern whether I'm going into just the mind's eye or just or the astral or whether they're the same thing I don't tend to care <laughs> I'm going in, I'm going in this, I'm, I'm like, like literally going in the door that is my third eye, I guess. Uh, so whatever you want to call that. Now, I will say here at the beginning, I don't believe that there are, in all the research that I've tried to do on this, but again, this is so personal to me as to how I travel. There's so many techniques that people have put on astral traveling, astral projection, mind palacing, uh, mind temples, astral temples, whatever the hell they want to say. They always have some kind of technique. Like you have to do this. You have to do that. I'm not about that. I am not about any kind of rules. If it doesn't feel right or if it feels forced, there's no way the door of the third eye is opening for me. So I very much have to do this naturally. It has to come naturally to me and but because, and I, and I, I will stress this, I kind of feel like it's been easier for me in the last, well, since I've been, since I've been into this, having the spiritual practice and, and witchcraft practice, I feel like it's been easier for me because of the severity, and I will use that word clearly, the severity of which I daydreamed as a child. So it's like, I've, I was already kind of, I already had like a house on the astral, <laughs> I already had this place that I went to that I added and took away things. I already had a, I'll say I already had a relationship with the mind's eye. 
So I don't really know if that makes it easier for me to visualize and meditate in my, in my own brand, special way, I guess you could say. So I'm not really sure that about pe what people would say the rules are, like the, the bona fide concrete rules are. I don't really go by the concrete rules, so we're not going to, I'm not going to talk about the rules because I don't care about the rules and I don't really research the rules. <laughs> But if you want, if you care about rules and you want to have your own kind of moral code as to what the, what you, how you want to map that out, how, uh, I guess you could say most witches map their astral temples out, you could do a lot of research and it'll probably come up. Um, I probably would use the term astral altar, astral temple, mind palace as keywords and key phrases, because if you just put whatever you think pops up or the name you pop up, nothing's going to come up and you'll be like page 10 of Google and still nothing. And you're like, <laughs> so I would try to use those terms and then see where that leads you if you're wanting to Google it. But again, I'm not trying to um, put any rules on my practice with this. So, uh, now an altar for me, let's back up a second. An altar for me is a, a sacred space or a special place. Not necessarily, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be a sacred space, but most people put it as a sacred space. It's a special place that houses tools, houses iconography, houses various things that uh, aid you in your practice and that you cultivate and organize in a specific way to aid in your practice. And it's usually a space that you physically go to in, in a reverent way with your practice for whatever you use an altar for wait, worship, devotions, ritual workings, magical working spells, things like that. Like you go to these altars, these sacred spaces, and you have how that, ha then this, this space houses actual tangible items that you feel maps out the practice or maps out the most prominent areas of your practice. It's what I always thought an altar was like, I guess the items on your altar would be symbols of your specific magic, the magic that you're working. So that's what I guess I, if I'm going to put like a definition on what an altar is, then that's what it is. Now, let's say, Okay. That that is what an altar is. In my opinion, that's a tangible reality altar, which is great. Okay. Okay. Now there's, uh, I'm saying uh, there's so many ways that you can think about the mind palace here, the mind uh, altar. And a lot of people do this because they don't have the space. They don't have the, um, they're, they're in the broom closet, which is very much a lot of my problem too is not wanting to have stuff out that people would immediately be able to go, you need to get back in church and have like an hour long conversation with me. I think they have the right to, that's where I, that's how I live with people. <laughs> so to have things out, but not in a, in a actual way where people would be able to discern what I've got out. So, you know, there's that. So that may be a reason to have a mind palace and you will want those like real life items in your mind altar in your, in this mental altar you have because you don't have an opportunity to ha to actually ha have these items with you. So you want to add them into this, 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 you know, beautiful altar you've made in your mind. You want to have those real life tools available to you and you go to this place to perform your rituals and your spells so that it's not just out in tangible reality for anyone to see. So I guess that's, those are reasons why people have mind uh, palaces. For me, this is literally a space. Uh, actually, I do consider it a sacred space for me. A sacred space to <clears throat> be as and I mean absolutely cuckoo crazy with what I build. If in the moment I want a dragon to just be sleeping right here beside beside my rose bush, 
it will happen. Okay, so this could include otherworldly beings. This could include actual conversations with entities. Okay, that I feel could aid me in my practice. And one could even go the scientific way with this. That usually when we meet uh, imaginary friends, I'll say, uh, I'll use that term imaginary friends these are psychological models we've put onto things that are are a part of our reality that we're finding difficult to deal with or we just don't know it's not difficult it's just we need help manifesting something we need help working through a problem we need help you know we need help of some kind we need help of uh, a, a way to gain back control maybe so we meet these entities and they, there could be some psychological help that we get from these entities because of what's happening in our own reality. Uh, so you could go the science way with it, or you could just go straight woo woo and say, I want to talk to a dragon today. Let me talk to a dragon today. And it manifested. <laughs> so I use this as a way to let my imagination literally flood like whatever I could possibly want. Now, I will say that my mind palace has a base look. It has a base look. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it would be so hard to describe what the base of this mind palace looks like to anyone else that's not in my mind. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful place and there are elements of reality of uh, what, what my reality there are elements of reality in there like bird song water sounds fire crackling like the elements are, are present there animals like you know uh real animal life is there wildlife is there so there are elements of like real world the real world excuse me um but then at the same time, I can pull otherworldly elements and entities in there as well. And uh, maybe they're permanent fixtures, maybe they're not. I kind of, I don't always have to change things up to make it feel like a sacred space. For some reason, it always feels like a sacred space to me. But you could be different. You could be one of those people that wants to change it up. You know, now I want to grow this, you know, vine here or this here. Blah, blah. Maybe your palace has rooms. Um, I read a book a long time ago that actually went into the Christian sect a little bit. Why is it so dark? Why is it so dark? I'm like, it's like dark, you know? And I feel like I need to be washed out like I normally am. <laughs> um, I read a book a long time ago that has like a, a very Christian connotation on it, but there were so many passages in there that, that ripped me raw in, in, in spiritual ways. And it's called the interior castle or the, uh, I think it's called the mansion or mansions by Teresa of Avila. And actually Mirabai Star has a rendition. I haven't read her rendition of this, but she's actually one of those spiritual people that has written spiritual books before. She's actually adapted uh, and interpreted the interior castle. I'll leave the link for that below if you want to check it out. But basically, Teresa of Avila was a, a monk from a long time, not a monk, I'm sorry, a nun from a long time ago that talked about the mind being a castle, a crit, actually a castle made of crystals, and it had many, many rooms in it, right? And for us woo-woo people, I, can, I think of tarot, I think of the mind palace, I think of a lot of things when I think of Teresa of Avila's interior castle and how the mind is very much mapped out like that and how when so many people put a, a one connotation on something like the mini room mansion or the interior castle as Teresa of Avila says or like me the mind palace I call it a mind palace it very much looks like a castle right well mine does okay <laughs> um uh, castles are sacred symbols to me. But if you think about it, then the mini room castle is an archetype. The archetype of the mind, right? And it's, it's all about this labyrinthine journey that you're going to go on. The way you seek is very labyrinthine. Everyone's labyrinth looks different. Everyone's castle looks different. Um, 
And I, I, you know, it's so it's such a beautiful thing that there's so many people that have s talked about the Mind Palace being an actual castle with many, many rooms. It's a mansion and it's just about the way in which you travel through the castle. I think that's beautiful. Um, and I think about, I, th I think a lot when I'm mapping my astral out, uh, astral mind palace, whatever, I think a lot about what if it were to uh, go into the future, a future I don't know, like a hundred years into my future, my reality's future. What would my altar look like then? What would my reality look like then, right? How, how, that, how they would relate. But I do think that the Mind Palace reflects some, some portion of the essence that is you. And I believe that the way in which we build our Mind Palaces have, will have a certain aesthetic. I do believe in aesthetics. I do believe that we're trained from our life experiences to have a certain aesthetic. And like we're built with so many of these archetypes that it's almost involuntary to have an aesthetic and to I like automatically want to choose certain things and, and choose certain uh, mappings of the mind. We want to be able to, we think it's random. Okay. This is what my husband always says about card shuffling. Something random here. Uh, something random my husband always says about card shuffling is that it's never really random. And what he means is, if you just take a sheet of paper here, okay, and someone were to ask you to draw stars, right, and you start, and you think it's random, it's not not ever random uh, and that's actually science that's, that's actually scientifically proven it's never random nothing is ever random everything is mathematically mapped out for you uh, and the way you process things it's just all math so <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway it's it's cool to think about the science behind certain things that we do but we, I do believe that we have like this internal archetype or mini and we have this internal aesthetic that just automatically allows us to the, uh, it, no, it doesn't allow us. It, it makes us do certain things in our own reality and in our mental palace. And so it's going to look different for everyone. It's going to be futuristic. It could be steampunk. It could be like mid-century. It could be medieval. Um, I do believe that we would all have different mind palaces and they'd be in different there'd be a different look and aesthetic to them. So it's just so cool to think about how different every single person is. And I think that when we, the rub of this is that in learning how unique our own mind palace is while building it and cultivating it, using the tools in it, using the, um, using, using it for whatever we want to use it for whether it's just sitting there in, in devotion, you, whether it's sitting there doing a spell, whether it's sitting there doing a ritual, whether it's sitting there communing with uh, your higher self or the spirit realm, the sense of source and divinity, your deities, like whatever you use your mental palace for, there's, there's a uniqueness. And while building this mental uh, palace, my mind palace, it, it allows me to open my mind up about how unique we all are, how truly, truly different we all are. And when you really think about the similarities between you and someone else, how beautiful is it to find someone that is completely unique of you? completely unique of you, but you found some kind of common, common interest, right? Common ground, common thought forms. And then it's even cooler to think about things that are part of you, like family, 
Um, like in my instance, my own children, you know, they literally came out of me. <laughs> so there is some of me in them, but that they themselves are completely void of me and completely unique of me. And it's like mind blowing. Okay. Mind blowing. I've had a lot of, lot of rabbit hole thoughts about this. So this is what the mind palace has taught me in my years working with it. Okay, so to round this off, because I've really just been wanting to ramble about the, my mind palace and my, my astral altar, if you will, I want to talk about the fact that my mind palace, this astral altar that I've built, is a place that I feel I physically go to, that I physically travel to. No, I may not be getting on a plane and shooting off, you know, across the ocean <laughs> to this place. But I do feel like I'm traveling there. I do feel like that this is a, a real place, even though it is happening in my mind, even though it's happening in my imagination. I use this space, the sacred space of mine that I've built to perform certain things that have allowed me to have a uh, more of an open mind with certain people, certain situations in my real, in my uh, conscious reality. It has allowed me to form better relationships with my higher self and my sense of divinity and largely to the chaos that they're in. Because there is a part of me that while I work with abstract deity, while I work with entities that are mythological, I guess you could say, while I work with this astral astral realm this this imagination i do largely believe in the power of chaos i largely believe in the power of creation and what that looks like and how very black hole in nature it looks how very big bang it looks and how scientific it can be but there's really no science to back up the mental this imagination work, right? And this chaos versus tangibility versus spirit versus elemental versus, <laughs> uh, I work with, I try to work with all of that. I try to do this with it all. And I guess that's what I was trying to do in one of my latest videos called spirituality versus witchcraft, which, um, if you haven't seen, go watch. I really, really tried to put down my thoughts as to what the differences between spirituality and witchcraft were, and then maybe the Venn diagram in the middle, but I don't know. I actually don't know people, a lot of people's thoughts on that. I didn't get a lot of engagement on that video. <laughs> and I kind of figured that would be the case because it, might, it was my Venn diagram I knew was so personal. <laughs> it's just like so weird to think about, you know, like it's like, well, well what is the point of this video? You know, no point, no point whatsoever. I just wanted to put it out, put my thoughts out there. Much like this one, the mind palace is something that I don't believe can be defined by science, but it is an actual real place to me. And it is a place that I can perform things in my magic, things in my witchcraft practice, things in my spiritual practice that have aided me in this life of witchcraft that I have. And, there's so much about this that is just imagination work. That's just meditation work. That's just visualization work. You know, there are some days that I can't even visualize an apple, you know, but isn't that the normal for visualization techniques? I can't even visualize an apple, right? As, and that goes, that goes back to the beginning, you know, the swan and the abstract blobs of color. Like some days I have trouble with that. But it's all about how I, how I, how I grow, how I can expand. And that's the most important thing for me. So I will say this to end this because, um, I want to mention this before I get off, before I forget that I have been known to use, um, now I use a notebook. Okay. I have specific, I actually have a several notebooks that I devote to my mind palace. I have one called the Enchanted Garden or the Secret Garden that I use just for like the flora 
okay? And uh, and I don't mean that to say that it's just like an herbal kind of a thing or a, a plant-based thing. It's not really that. It's more drafting, like architecturally drafting. My dad taught me how to do that. Um, architecturally drafting spaces out. Uh, even if they don't include my mind palace specifically, I like to, to draft spaces in there that, um, like building my own castles, building my own houses, building my own gazebos with a lake, blah, blah, blah. I like to build, actually build in a, in an architecture drafting way that helps me visualize things in a, uh, in a visual, actually it helps me to visualize. So I use uh, architecture and drafting in that notebook and I use plants and the properties they're in how would they work oh we got to put that on the south side stuff like that so uh, it's more architecture in the enchanted in my enchanted garden notebook and then I've got one that houses it's very scrapbooky in nature it houses pictures like from magazines quotes from books uh, I very much use things in my reality to help me map out my mental altar. It's not just something that I conjured up straight from my imagination. I'll use a picture of like, there's one that I keep thinking about right now. Oh my God. It's a dark picture of roses. And I mean roses, okay? And the roses are like blood red. And whenever I look at this picture, I can physically smell oh, the heaty scent of the roses at their peak, okay? And I'm intoxicated by it. And this picture does that for me. So it's in there. It lives in there. Uh, I, I think about that picture a lot, actually. And I actually put it in my Oracle deck, which is the next thing I want to say um, before that. So I do use books. I do use magazines. I do use pictures that I actually, I actually take to glue and paste in their scrapbook style. So I have several notebooks that I use for this. But I, I can, I have been known to use cards. Now I technically don't use tarot because I found that unless I want to ask a specific question, not that I always do with tarot, but when, if I'm working out a specific problem in my mind's altar, mental altar, mind palace, um, I find that tarot is too structured because of the, the ethereal abstract nature I would like to keep with my mind palace. I very much want it to look like this. I don't want it to look like this. Um, but that's my, that's only me, right? So I tend to only go Oracle and I have found that my brand new Oracles, actually both of these are by me. That's so crazy. They work wonderful for this. Um, I have my Wild Nature Wild You, which I, I, I talk about in, on the channel because it works for me, but I made this. So it may not work for someone else and it may not be something that no one else is interested in. These are nature photos that <clears throat> I mapped out solely by myself the elements that I wanted present in this oracle, the keywords, I actually came up with the keywords first, which is a fun little tidbit of this card, uh, of this deck. Um, and then I mapped images to go with this keywords. So, um, and it all is on my wild self because it's called wild nature, wild you. The fact that we are not separate from nature. We're not separate from the imagination and the tangible reality isn't separate. And this is something that this Oracle is teaching me about that. So, um, this is my wild nature, wild Jew Oracle. Let me pull a card. It's cause I love shuffling this deck. I want to show you the, uh, the rose in this deck. So this protect which is like this moss covered stone wall. I love this. Many ways to protect the mind palace. <laughs> but also I wanted to show you the rose picture because it very much looks like this is the rose picture that uh, makes me smell the rose every single time. I can, I'm just there, I'm in this and I'm, I'm like that 
pre-Raphael light painting where the uh, the woman is like smelling the rose. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm her in this moment. Now, I wrote a guidebook for my Wild Nature, Wild You oracle, and I want to read Protect since that's the card that we got. A moss-covered stone wall stands erect, possibly as a garden gate from long ago. A garden gate. I like that um, because it's making me think of my mind palace. Uh, the stones were laid carefully. This has ensured its standing for centuries. The wall protects the vast garden from pesky rabbits that might eat all the delicious carrots and lettuce. There are many ways in which to protect oneself. The purpose of the wall is not to keep you locked up. It's to form boundaries for the better good. Putting boundaries in place is making the announcement to everyone in your life to watch themselves. It is for your benefit to keep you safe from harm and your vegetables. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's just is because I, I think about Beatrix Potter when I think about that. All right. And then my newest acquisition is my bell book and candle oracle, which is a... Uh, actual actual photos it's a photo alters uh photo altar photo oracle as well full of what i consider altars of all kinds and i mean these in the all the altars that could ever be in tangible reality and if this 63 card deck doesn't even come close to what all the altars that could look like are. It just doesn't, this just doesn't come close. But yet when I use this deck and I pull a card, it helps me to map out versions that I want to see, elements I want to see in my own tangible altars, the little bitty ones I have everywhere, and my mind palace. So I'm going to pull a card from this as well. I love the backs of this. Uh, it's not reversible, but it's kind of like foggy mist is exactly what I see before my mind's palace comes into view. Um, so just a little cutesy tidbit. Plus, I don't tend to use reversals in oracles anyway. Um, actually, I don't use them in tarot. <laughs> so uh, these two popped out. Put this back in the bag. Because... Technically, this version of, of this deck is going to a friend of mine. Um, so these two popped out. Prayer candles in a Catholic church. And this very Buddha, this very um, Buddha statue with incense going. Um, I think of love when I think of this, but you may think of something different. In this specific oracle, the Bell Book and Candle Oracle, I don't have words, keywords on this because I very much want people to use this oracle as a way to map out altars, a way to map out witchcraft. Uh, think about the elements in their witchcraft that may need tweaking, that you may have question about, right? Uh, when I look at these two cards, I think of incense burning being a form of prayer. Candle lighting and incense burning and fire, the fire element, being a form of prayer and I may if I were to pull these two cards like outside of this video I would think about journaling about the power of the element of fire and how I use that in prayer um, how I would use that how I could use that in terms of prayer and how I use how I could use that in terms of devotion um, and I mean just let my mind go you know but in terms of my mind palace, this could just be telling me to put more fire element in there. And, well, a lot, I think of incense, too, as air. Um, but it could just be a way, like, have some, have some more candles going. Have some more incense going, right? It could just be as simple as that, you know? You need more candles. I got a shit ton of candles in my mind palace, y'all. Like, <laughs> Uh, but I, I guess I need more, you know, I need more incense. I need more things that will send me, I like to have lots of candles in my mind palace because it's drafty in there because it's an actual castle. But then I think about the fact that the smoke from the candles and the smoke from incense will put me in a state of, uh, there, there needs to be more zone outs. That's what I want to say. There needs to be more zone outs. 
um, I need to be in this, like, this, the smell's overtaking me and my senses are overwhelmed and I need to start zoning out when that happens. So that's what this is telling me as well. So anyway, uh, all right. And that's what I wanted to say about my mind palace. Now I know that I didn't go into like fit, you know, actual things that you can do. This is very, a, a very personal chat, but, um, I hope that this, I hope that this helped because I don't know if it did. I don't know if it would, but leave me your, leave me your thoughts on astral altars, mind palace, mind palace altars, mind palaces in general. Even if they're not performing the work of an altar, they, you could still have a mind palace, you know? So I guess let me know your thoughts on altars and astral altars and uh, we can have a dialogue about it. All right. Hope to see everyone again on the channel. Much love.